Good afternoon, we love Grayson Evans. I am here in the apex, as you can tell, with Richard Baker Howard. Richard Baker Howard. That's it. Get the name right. <laughs> <laughs> Who is representing the Rejoin Party. That's right. What's that all about? Well, this is clearly a new party. We weren't formed till after the Brexit referendum in 2016, where this wasn't even thought of. It wasn't the thing to rejoin the European Union because we were you know, well established within the European Union as one of the senior powers. And um, we had this terrible adjunct in our policy in 2016 with a referendum, which was obviously to keep the Tories sweet from the uh, surge of the right wing parties. Um, we left in 2020 and most of us were scratching our heads thinking, what can we do? Do we just put up with this nonsense or do we say, no, there is an alternative. We can reopen the debate to rejoin ultimately. It's not going to happen initially. Uh, but we just want to make everybody aware of the, the, let's say, putting it euphemistically, the nostalgic fantasies that were told about leaving. Uh, a lot of people's language was outright lies, and we can go through the specific issues. Um, but let's, let's put it mildly, the, the nostalgic fantasies that took us out of the European Union. Now, this was voted for, it was a democratic plebiscite. We, we, we in this party are, are not in doubt that this was a democratic mandate. That's something but I was going to ask you about. We were sold down the river. The prospectus was false in every respect, and I trust we'll go on to the specifics of that. So uh, I joined um, only a few months ago, and uh, the election has come round rather sooner than anyone was expecting. So um, we, uh, we've had to field a lot of uh, pretty quick candidates who weren't particularly uh, politically engaged. And we are at a position now of representing uh, a lot of London constituencies and a few dotted about uh, the country. I'm so lucky to be working in my own constituency, various numbers in Stowmarket, and it's a pleasure to be here. And if we can open this debate up to make it every party aware in this constituency, in all constituents aware that there is a debate going on about rejoining Europe, at least having a better realignment with Europe, then I'll be happy. So you mentioned this is your constituency, so yes. you live in the area? I've lived in Stowmarket for about 10 years, yes. Right, excellent. So you're very familiar with what's going on in, in the area. I am. A little bit more in touch with people who are, rather than those people who are, shall we say, parachuted in. <clears throat> exactly. No, I've been here for 10 years. I'm passionate about this place. I'm in Barry St. every other weekend. What do you think about Barry St. It's a fantastic town, clearly. But, you know, you could say Barry St. Edmunds, oh, isn't it pretty, isn't it lovely? You have the flower beds, we have the St. Edmunds Cathedral, isn't it lovely? I don't want Barry St. Edmunds to be a lovely place. I want it to be a thriving place with a central community with a hub of industry and business and, and technology, if we can. It's not the greatest technological site in the country, but we can make it so. We have Branson Pickle. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's pretty awesome. Branson Pickle is well, about be, an 80 old brand, it. isn't it? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, bring on the Branson, I remember those ads. Yeah, I was, I was a boy of those times. Yeah. No, but I mean, I, I love Barry and Edmonds, which is why I'm here most of the time. I was in this very apex last week for the Antarctic Monkeys. It's fantastic. All oh, right. So so what is your, your work background? What, what, is, what is your history? History. I'm in the art world. I'm an art, uh, a critic, art dealer, gallerist, curator, a number of other things uh, in the art world. Uh, I'm sometimes auctioneer. I took the uh, Ukrainian art auction uh, for displaced artists at Coventry Cathedral last year um, because that, that's part of the, uh, the idea that we can actually give something back to artists who have been displaced by the uh, Russia-Ukraine war. We can talk about that one as well if you like. Um, so I do various things here, uh, a lot in London, if I'm honest, and all over the world. I've had shows in Budapest, in Singapore, in uh, Dubai, so all over. But uh, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll go for work wherever it takes me. So, assuming you were to win, how much can we rely on you? Well, because I, live in the constituency. I, I was going to say because yes, but so does Joe Churchill, who has been our representative for the last. Three, three terms. I don't think you've seen much of her over the last uh, five years. No, no, you're absolutely spot on. Yeah, she tends to be in London an awful lot, and she's she earned herself the dubious nickname of No Show Joe. No Show Joe. Yes, yes, yes. Because that is the case. Of, have, we, have we had it? So yeah. therefore, she's not had surgeries with with members of the public in Bury or the area. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, she's met people, it seems, for photo opportunities. We want somebody who's actually going to be proactive for exactly. our area because we've not had that for an awful long time. No, you haven't. No, I mean this election gives me and our party a great opportunity 
to uh, stand a local candidate who's passionate about the area and passionate about the politics involved in this specific election. And this is a very specific election. We've had uh, you know, 2012, 2017, 2019, you know, loads of elections over the last 10 years. We've had this massive referendum. And uh, this year there are going to be many new MPs standing. Uh, if I'm lucky enough to be elected in this constituency, I live in this constituency already. I play here, I do everything here, apart from my work, which is, which is not here, but that's the very nature of the business I'm in. Um, and I will be conducting surgeries every week, and I will always be available. So no, do I'm not you, just saying that for politics, I will actually of be course, here. Yeah. Do you think it's more important to be more in, interested in local issues than national interests? Well, I think they coalesce in terms of um, what I'm standing for, which is the rejoin EU party. This is about looking at the local impact of this damn thing and working uh, to try and reduce friction in trade and other businesses and give people the opportunities we've lost. Uh, it's, a, it's a huge amount of that. So, uh, you know, I'll be working with local businesses to try and bring in investment to this, uh, this constituency. I mean, we've seen how stone market has been hollowed out, certainly in the retail sector. So it's, it's impossible just to say, I'm going to be local. I'm not going to focus on national, let alone international. Would you say your emphasis would be greater on local? Uh, yes, well, I mean, I, I am a local boy. I've lived here for a decade. Right. You know, I, okay. I'm, I only wish the best for Stowe Market and uh, various Edmonds. I'm sure every MP says that, but then MPs go off and they do other things. And they're like Joe Churchill, they're slightly reclusive. You don't see them, they don't do surgeries, and they're absent. I will be here. I'm here every other weekend, and if I'm the MP, I will be here all the time. Part well, of my number one The great thing now is we can put a face to you, because on one of the things I was looking at, I didn't. There wasn't any images, so now we know what you look like. So that's a good help. Well, I'm, I'm and not we can sure get that's a spoon. <laughs> I think that might stay there. Honestly, it would have well, been okay, we'll take a pinch of salt on that one. <laughs> um, so, okay, so you talk, you mentioned Ukraine there. Yes. So the problems there. Have you ever been to Ukraine? No, it's not a country. I've been to many countries a lot in the Middle East and Far East. I mean, it's the poorest country in Europe. It's not one that I would ever go to. Being in the art world, it does sway you to certain specific locations. So um, I'll be honest with you and say I've not been to Ukraine, but I've been to many other countries around it. Hungary is one right right it's next. It's stunning. Though. Is it? Well, when I saw it two years ago, it's beautiful, beautiful place. So, so you've been there? Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. And I've been up to Pripyat as well, the, uh, where the uh, nuclear disaster happened. Yeah. yeah so yeah, I came yeah. away glowing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. I'll note that down. That's a good one. I like that, yeah. Um, but, um, so, so, yeah, the, the war. I mean, there's nothing we can do on a, on a local level, I'm sure. No. I don't know. Uh, well, it's... there are things we can do, actually. What we can do is raise funds. What we can do is push the issue. There's nothing we can do to change the geopolitical situation there. You know, if someone was to dispense with Putin, the war would be over in an instant. This is very much Putin's war. The rest of the population be co-opted by a, a range of propagandistic and militaristic means, and um, I know a lot of people who have come from Russia who are so disgusted by the activities of their country to live in London, and I see a lot in the art world. Right. And um, a friend of mine actually took a truck, was loaded down with goods, he drove it across Europe and delivered it to the edge of. Ukraine. I thought that's fantastic. I haven't done that, but that is an opportunity for anyone to do. They can directly be involved in helping that ghastly situation there. We did have a few uh, collection things which did go from Bury, which, yeah, yeah. Was, which was really, really awesome to see. So, uh, and it sort of chokes you up a bit because you you, you realise that at heart people are a good, good sold. And, I think they uh, are. Yeah, very much yeah. so. But most people are good actors, but um, sometimes you get bad people. That, you know, you know, people on the internet are there to rip us off. We know there are bots. Everywhere. Oh, too there are, much, too there much. There are people who track you down. The haters, I think it's called. Yeah, the yeah. Things. Oh, they're they're around. Yeah, they're around. Yeah. Yeah, I brush them off. Whatever. Um, what do you think about the NHS? How can we improve the situation there with the young doctors going out on strike, wanting thirty-five percent? <clears throat> Yeah, well, I mean, 35% is completely unrealistic, if I'm honest. Junior doctors need a fair deal. I know there are a number of doctors who are uh, recently qualified, but because it is such a difficult situation in employment, then they're not getting the jobs, even though the jobs are there to take. Um, but essentially, it's the, uh, the funding crisis and the crisis of recruitment. The funding crisis has caused, by and large, because we've left the European Union, we've lost 30 to 40 billion pounds of receipts, the money just isn't there. The money is there to a certain extent for every individual need, whether it's the NHS, whether it's hospitals, whether it's social services, whether it's defence, there's big calls uh, for financing. 
NHS in this area is terribly important. I've been in touch with the uh, surgeries in Woolpit, the commissioning um, uh, doctors there who suggest we want a sort of local rim fencing, we want electronic uh, prescriptions, we want a, a number of different aspects and certainly a fair deal for doctors. But essentially with 100,000 vacancies in the NSS nationwide, if we reopen the doors to our European friends and we have a sensible immigration policy, that will go, you know, there will be a lag, but that will be ameliorated in a few months. Because also we've suffered in East Anglia, or we've suffered basically all over the country, let's face it, with the dental crisis as well, because people haven't been able to see a dentist or a national health dentist, should I say. Oh yeah, absolutely. Which is appalling. So this all comes down to this financial crisis, this austerity, dare I say. And you know, it's all about money. Yeah, uh, everything thing. comes down to money every time. It really does. It? Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's very difficult to find an NHS dentist. Most are private. Um, you're on waiting lists for many months, if not years, for an NHS dentist. And there are, they're, they're few and far apart. That, that is one issue I'll be dealing with. I mean, it's, it's not the biggest priority. The NHS is the biggest priority. Schools are something we can talk about. You know, there, are, there are big issues in every area. One of the main problems is funding. The right. it, lack it, of investment. Say, coming down to yes, it's the lack of investment of, from the government. Absolutely. Really. Yeah. 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 This, this works with the county council, as you know. They have a big issue in local servicing. Um, I, I, I would like the communication level to be increased so we get a better share of um, voice in Westminster from Suffolk and you know specifically this constituency. Right. Um, so, well, also, you suppose we talk about with funding, also potholes and stuff as well, but that's, that's not <laughs> yes. so much an MP issue as a, as a county county it's issue. It's an issue for me, I can tell you, yeah. I'll, yeah. Go, I'll post them, wouldn't deliver until they fill the potholes. <sighs> we got in touch with the councillor, he did fill it actually. Yeah, are we, gonna start, are we going to start filling them with, with fertiliser and putting plants in them like they have done around well, you, the country? Well, you can't get the fertiliser now because we've stopped, them, <laughs> stopped the open trade with Europe, you oh, see. Oh, you've got I was going to get that. You've got an answer for everything, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so... Um, so funding, uh, education, it would come under funding, public transport under funding, yes. uh, improving, uh, reducing crime rates and stuff. Yep. Mental, mental health is something which is close to my heart because it's a case yeah. of that if people are putting into the community or, you know, or there's not places who can look after them or the elderly where there's uh, old people's homes, that's, that's not probably what they call them now anyway, um, who can't afford to keep them there or the, the cost of things is so high for people who have worked really really hard and they can't afford to look after these people which is very very sad that's it yeah well i think this this falls between uh, the idea of the state supporting everyone from cradle to grave and, and personal responsibility now clearly some people are There's not a... in a financial position to look after themselves no go it falls on the state to look after them. yeah you know it's it, it, these are it is a six judge. of one and a half just the other you're very much so, yeah yeah yeah, yeah. So, have you done any doorstepping? Yeah. Yes, I certainly have for my nominations and for, um, just to find out what the local issues are. And what so are those local issues? That's what I want to know. What are people saying to you uh, on the well, doorstep? Well, uh, immigration does come up, uh, as you can imagine. Um, Brexit comes up when I mention it. <laughs> and, you know, it, it is a big issue. It, of this, course. this plays into Even now. Issue. Even now. Oh, yeah. As more now. You know, this, this isn't really on the agenda, but we are, we are bringing it on the agenda by the nature of my party, the rejoining of the yield party. Yeah, so yeah. so we're, we're something of a single issue pressure group, but we have a larger programme for government. It's good to we know that it's not all one issue. I mean, it is yeah. the main, one of the main issues that you are standing for. That's right. And I totally understand that. But of course, as an MP, you would have lots of other things to, to think about as well, which is... Absolutely. I mean, you have job, the, the local it? issues, the community issues, the national issues, the, and the global political issues. And uh, we so have what, to deal with all those. What about... When we left Europe, mm -hmm. what annoyed you about it? What specifically annoyed you about uh, it? Uh, what generally annoyed me was the fact that we were sold a prospectus which was based on, at best, nostalgic fantasies and at worst, outright lies. We all saw the big red bus, hundreds of million pounds for the NHS, cheaper food, cheaper energy, net migration down to zero, exactly the same trade as we'd have outside and inside, frictionless trade, Boris Johnson's having a cake and eat it too. So it was generally the lies that were told that, that were foisted on us, and people thought, you know what, I don't follow the politics too closely, but I like the sound of that. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm going to put my tick in the leave box. And um, we were sold a prospectus which was based on fantasy which had no validity and the cows have very much come home on this one 
most people have realised that everything that was purported to be a fact has been a lie, and we are suffering the consequences of that very mm. much, even now. And it's, it's going to get worse, mm. and it's already doing so. You mentioned food going, food prices are going down, of course they've gone up. Exactly. You mentioned frictionless trade, of course all that nonsense with uh, the Northern Ireland uh, trade issues and stuff going on yep. there, and, you know, and the fact that there's so much more paperwork for importers to... Completely. Yeah, it's crazy. And also yes. something that I thought was like when um, when we go abroad now into Europe, mm -hmm. we have to show our passports more so. It's, this it, is what we wanted. We wanted to be treated as a third country, so of course you have to show your passports. Yeah, we yeah. wanted to be. But so why are our passports now being made elsewhere in Europe and not because in the UK? That That's crazy. Completely an absurdity, <laughs> the ridiculousness of this policy of Brexit. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you for making my point. Yes. It's, it's, it's one of those things which, because obviously I'm, I'm about to go away on holiday and stuff, and you know, it's, it's all the hassle of having to get the passport out. And yeah, you can do it anyway because we go abroad, but it's just a lot more difficult. You know, you take your dogs abroad, it's much more expensive. Anything like this, mm. because of this, you know, because we're an island, yes, and because yes, we're connected, but we're <coughs> not connected. Um, no, I mean, the, the point is most trade is done geographically, you know, we, we don't naturally trade with the Philippines and Guatemala and other things, we trade with Europe, we yeah. have the Republic of Ireland, we have a land border with it, we're 22 miles from Calais, it's completely absurd to pretend we can wheel ourselves off or sail off into the Mid-Atlantic exactly. doing deals with America and NAFTA, we're not part of those deals, we won't be for many years. And then they, they were talking about getting food from further afield, which therefore increases the, the, the carbon, carbon footprint. footprint. Look at us, said it at the same time. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it, it, it does. And every issue is hugely impacted with yeah. this decision we've made. It was a very, very bad decision. And we're trying, to, we're trying to write it. So the Conservatives, having been in power for the last 14 years, um, they don't have a good record on green issues, do they? The Conservatives have a terrible attitude to it, for starters, and their policy has not been to support green issues. Um, I, I know they have a, a big issue in themselves, like they do about the culture of the party, whether they're outgoing internationalists or whether they're protectionist isolationists. And that's the same with the Green policy. Right. Um, I think this is quite writ large with um, size well B, but then both parties are, are seemingly in favour of, of the new nuclear project. Um, that, that's a big issue for me, I'm not sure. They, if you actually add in the cost of decommissioning, nuclear power is fantastically expensive. And we have the nuclear waste issue as well. Mm. But it is a green um, a, a way of uh, producing energy. This is a sort of renewable in a sense. Now I I um, make myself unpopular saying I love these wind turbines, the sort of static beauty. Sort They're of brilliant. Yeah. You know, I, I love mm. them. And, and solar power is, is a, a very easy win for us. Do you know those wind tur turbines are a damn sight more attractive than pylons? They are. They are. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> they most certainly are, yeah. Not everyone likes them. <clears throat> so a blot on the landscape, but you know. Yeah. It just seems there, was, there was talk a few months ago about uh, having a solar farm over a uh, new market way, mm -hmm. and West Suffolk were a bit yeah. up in arms about it. They didn't want it. It's a bit not in my backyard type idea. What's wrong with a solar farm? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, brilliant, brilliant stuff. Um, some, and something that I picked up on the other day was there's people who drive around in their electric cars, mm -hmm. but where is that electricity coming from? Is it coming from renewable energy? No, it's coming from the grid. Yes. So, so, so it's a bit of a false economy, surely. If you yeah. can have a nuclear, nuclear sorry, an a electric car, have a, have a solar panel to, to drive it. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you've, all, you've got to go all in. You, you, you can't be a half and half on this. No. But it's a bit like a hybrid motor. I mean, they're, they're a good way to go about it. I mean, once the infrastructure's in place and, and people can charge and their EV points are readily available, then that will give the momentum that uh, electric vehicles require. And but until equally, that, you don't have it. But, I, don't, but I, I take on your issue. That the, th those rechargeable points should be coming from solar power. Uh, of course they should. Or, yeah. or wind power or whatever. It, it's almost unanswerable, but uh, it that, is. the question is not asked. Yeah, I, yeah. I completely agree. Bit of a non-brainer, that one, I think. Yes. <laughs> okay, is there anything else you'd like to tell me about you can think of? Um, for me, I mean, we haven't specifically been on, on the issue that I'm, I'll be banging on about this election, which is Brexit and the iniquities therein. Let's go for it. Yeah, I mean... Yeah, 
we, we, let's, let's talk about trade. I mean, the city of London has been massively hit. People say, oh, it's only lost seven to 10,000 jobs. You know, only a, a trillion pounds has been repatriated to Europe. Is that, is that losing jobs? Is that losing jobs in London? It is then losing also, jobs in London, absolutely. Yeah, also, that's knocking on to the, the businesses that thrive off of that, like cafes and bars and of stuff. Of course it is. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. When London goes down, we go down to the nation. This yeah. is the engine of growth in our entire country. People say we want levelling up, and levelling up has been a, 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 just a policy of nonsense, a, a typical Tory policy that, that has Sounds no like empty words. In reality. It is empty words. It's a slogan, mm. like Global Britain. I mean, it's absolute nonsense. And that, it's, it's the level of dishonesty in, in the Brexit campaign and afterwards by the Tory party that, that offends us most in this party. What we're trying to bring back is a level of honesty and, and present the facts and say, this is what's happened, this is our solution. And the, our solution is quite a coherent one, I think, which is ultimately to rejoin the European Union. It's not going to happen yet, and it's going to happen with a, a great deal of negotiating in between. But we have to make a start in realising that this thing has been a catastrophe for many people particularly our schools, our young people. I think we used to be able to go and travel in Europe, like, mm. like the old grand tourists. Of the oh, absolutely, yeah, yeah. Go on an interrail. And live. And yeah, inter I know those people did the interrail stuff. Yeah. And, and stopped off in Amsterdam and, and Munich and just had a fantastic time. Yeah, yeah. But that's been denied them now. We can't do it. So for our young people, it's been a disaster. For our musicians, our artists, it's been terrible. For industry, with the piles of paperwork and the red tape... It's the same for any Europeans terrible. coming over to the UK as well. It is, to, to, to my idea stuff. is not to put up big brick walls with keep out signs. It's to build bridges. They welcome in. You know, I'm not suggesting we have an open door immigration policy. Of course not. But if you take one of the main functions of the, well, the main platforms of the Brexit Party was to reduce net migration down to zero, they failed spectacularly even on that score. Because last year it's about 785,000 people net migration. It's massive. Mm. So even on that score they failed spectacularly. And the rest, it, it, well, there we are. We can, we can examine it. But it's going to get boring talking about trade machinations. OK, throwing another almost connected to that. Yes. Uh, phrase that uh, they brought out, stop the boats. Yes. Well, it, it, indeed, stop the boats, it, it seems to be the Conservative Party's policy, doesn't it? Vote for us, stop the boats. I mean, it's complete nonsense compared to the level of, um, of legal migration. That the boats are a bit of a non-issue, but it's become a totemic issue for the Tories mm -hmm. and the fact they had to stop the boats. And then they devise ridiculous schemes like sending to Rwanda. And they haven't sent one person yet. Yeah. One no. person. It'd be better to put them on the cruise liner to go on a, on a cruise to the uh, to Florida and via Cuba and have a great holiday and come back. I mean, it's so absurd, virtue signalling as they'd regard it, to their own supporters, hunkering down to the right-wing xenophobes. I, I think it's absolutely terrible, party. But like, it, 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 <laughs> the it, Tories it, have been terrible. It borders on racist, I think. It really. certainly does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, a policy that's been proposed in this last election run-up yep. has been at the thing of national service. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, I've spoken you to everyone. Laugh, Richard. Everybody you laugh, Richard. You laugh, Richard. Why do you laugh, <laughs> Richard? What, what is so amusing about national what service? What is going on? Where are we as a country? <laughs> Who got this stupid service? idea? <laughs> it's I, mean, it's, yeah, I mean, I think the Tories have, have hunkered down, realised they're probably going to lose this result, uh, this election spectacularly badly. So they want to, to appeal to their core. Uh, and their core thinks, you know, Brexit, xenophobia, a slight tinge of racism and national service. We want to go back to 1950s, don't we? That's what we voted for in this in the first place. So national service naturally plays into that. I mean, I think it's an absurd idea in this day and age. At least no one wants to do it. I oh, think to, actually our young people are going to be pelled to take up arms. I believe it was Will Spanner, sorry, Will Tanner's <laughs> idea. I must stop calling him that. I'll you get, must. I'll get you slapped must. for being rude. Um, Will Tanner's idea, who is the Conservative representative who's been parachuted in, yes. um, that was his idea to Rishi. I that believe. was his idea? I believe so. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Well, so, I mean, I think it's an idea as time has passed by about 60 years, if I'm honest. Yeah. It's a complete nonsense. I mean... It, it, Do you remember the TV show Get Some In? Get Some In? Yeah, oh, Tony God. Selby. Come on, think No, you, you, are, you are a totally different generation oh, than me, James. okay, no. cheers. <laughs> <laughs> I don't actually remember I can take that. it on the chin, both <laughs> of them. <laughs> well, you know, a beard does hide a multitude of chins. Yeah, well, I'll grow it when I'm on it one on the way. You know, I didn't have a bit, bit and a half. Um, but, yeah, yeah, so... Um, it, it, Okay, it's not always going to always, you know, their, their idea, it's not going to be all military. But <clears throat> getting somebody to do something 
for nothing. Mm. It's like, really? Okay. Well, I, I, I have a suggestion for you just off the cuff. I'm thinking is uh, farmers can't bring in the labour from Europe to pick crops and they're rotting in, rotting in the fields. They have them for two years. Let's get those people, instead of military service, let's get them picking the crops. Fantastic. Uh, great solution that is, isn't it? Fantastic, yeah. There you go. Yeah. Look, Look after the, the farmers. Look after the farmers, yes. Again, farmers have lost huge amounts of markets. They can't sell into Europe now. Yeah, we, we see, signs, pick, yeah. see signs around town. I don't know if you've got them in Soma. You probably do. Um, no farmers, no food. Yes, it is shocking to see yeah. where we've come in this 21st century. Yeah. We've, we've left the European Union. We thought, what now? It's almost like we've moved into a third world country. Yeah, yeah. It's crying shame. It is, it is. But I, it, you know, being generous, I'm always trying to look for positives in every situation. And I really cannot for the life of me look at any single positive from Brexit. I simply can't. And you look at the audience for question time. Fiona Bruce does it. Anyone, anyone having the same break? Anyone? Anyone? <laughs> no, actually no one, no. No. But, you know, the snake oil salesmen have uh, sold us this thing, Farage and his gang. It's not a political party, it's a company. They're raking in hundreds of millions of pounds. Of course. Not, they're not normal, that lot. But, you know, a lot of people seem to think they're a respectable political party. To a certain extent they are. <laughs> they're standing in this constituency and, and many others. Well, thank you very much, Richard Baker Howard. My pleasure. Rejoin EU. Rejoin EU. We won't be doing any time soon, but in years to come, hopefully Indeed. we will. And small steps Absolutely go a right. long way. Thank you very yes. much for chatting today. It's my pleasure. Much appreciated. Thank you Thank for having you. me. You're very welcome. Cheers.